welcome everyone and uh, this is our my podcast called tell me your story i'm so excited to have today as our guest lina soto who is associate dean of counseling at mount sac and does some great things again i am araceli garcia and i have been a high school ela teacher for almost 25 years i recently left the classroom i now support middle school and high school classrooms throughout the district as a teacher on special assignment I decided to do this little podcast just to interview and get the behind the scenes stories, some of our educators and some of our activists in our community. They're doing amazing things that I really wanted to know, you know, what got them here. So thank you, Lena. Tell us a little bit about who you are and, you know, tell us how did you get to, to the great position that you have now? Hi, well, it's so good to see you, Araceli. Thank you for having me. And um, yeah, I, I serve as associate dean, but I started off as a counselor at Mount San Antonio College in the EOPS and care program. And, and then I decided I wanted to go into general counseling and do a little bit more in the campus community because I was really involved in the academic senate. So I became a general counselor, continued my work as an academic senate, and I was a, a counselor for 18 years. Yeah. <laughs> I and saw I that. Became, I looked you up. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, for oh. 18 years, a long time. And I was vice president of the Academic Senate nice. when this opportunity came up. And I thought, well, what, what do I want? What's, what's, where am I in my life right now? And I really felt if I can help my colleagues stay motivated, keep moving forward with the innovation, because we have such great counselors there, then that's where I want to be. I, I've had been in all these leadership positions now, right? So I threw my hat in the ring and here I am doing. Yes, <laughs> you know, like I mentioned, a lot of people probably, you know, don't know this, uh, a couple of the counselors that we work with do, but you and I go way back to UC San Diego. We go way back and we were, you know, we were involved in the activist movement. I know, you know, I can't even think of the name of my high school counselor, sadly. You know, I don't think I had much interaction with uh, my high school counselors other than these are the classes you had to take. Um, you know, again, same thing with teachers, you know, some of them might, might've been discouraging to some of my, you know, friends who are like, nah, you know, we went to UC San Diego and, you know, it was a tough school. So the position of being a, a high school counselor, a counselor at a college, uh, they're, they're important positions and roles, especially in our community, our Latinx community, our black community, our, you know, Native Americans, so forth, students of color. Um, Tell me a little bit about way back, you know, did you think that you wanted to be a, a counselor or did you want to get involved in education back when you were in college? You know, I didn't know education was my path, but I knew I wanted to help people. I just didn't know what that would look like. So yet when I went, my high school counselor wasn't very helpful either, unfortunately. Um, when it, I was in my honors classes and that's how mm -hmm. I found out when SATs were due. I overheard other classmates talking about it that their counselor was telling them, but they weren't telling me. And I was probably one of three Chicanas in the classroom. Right. So I thought, why am I missing this information, right? But they didn't tell me either. So then I'd have to rush, do it last minute, get it done. Um, so I remember when I thought, well, I wanna help people. What does that look like? I started taking psychology. And then I was like, wow, this is a lot of science. I don't know that this yeah. is my thing. This is a lot of science. <laughs> Um, and I thought I really struggled finding my way and I got into ethnic studies and I felt like someone was telling me history for the first time, like for yeah. the real history. And I ended up becoming an ethnic studies major, but still not sure, like, where does this take me? Right. And that's the question all the students get. What are you going to do with that major? What are you going to do? Right. Yeah. So I ended up um, doing some work in the summer with Upward Bound programs and I was the resident assistant for the on campus upward bound for the right, summer right and i loved working with the high school students yeah. i would volunteer during the regular school year and go back the next summer and be a residential assistant yeah. again yes. and then help out again the next year and i just fell in love with it and that's when someone took notice of me and said i think you'd be really good as a counselor have you thought about a counseling program and i thought that's what i've always thought i wanted to do <laughs> i just didn't know how to get there yeah so they helped me and I applied and I got to do a master's program in um, in education, but with an emphasis on multicultural counseling. So to me now it just, the thread and the needle just all lined up, right? Hi. I had the ethnic studies degree and now I have counseling with an emphasis on multicultural counseling. 
you it know, was perfect. A lot of students, sometimes they don't even know like the majors that are out there, the type of careers are kind of like, I kind of want to go to college. I'm not too sure. Right. And uh, same story, you know, I, I had a fight to get into honors classes way back in like, I think in middle school, I was an English learner. Right. And I didn't have the test scores and I had the language, you know, barriers, but you know, I wanted, I, I wanted to challenge myself and, you know, same thing. It was the, my peers sitting next to me who were like filling out college applications and my teacher, actually my high school teacher, I always honor him. Mr. Henninger made all of us apply. You will all apply to UCs, a Cal state and a, you know, a, a out of state private school also. And he didn't care. He didn't care what our test scores were. He didn't ask us. He just said, you will get it done. Wow. And I got in, you know, and so yeah. I think we still, you know, kind of continue that like, you know, kids need to know what's out there. We shouldn't judge them based on how maybe, you know, yeah, the kid that's always absent or the kid that puts his head down, hey, those kids might might need that little push, right? Absolutely. And funny story, you know, when I was going into high school, the counselor told my mom I would never make it in the honors classes. Wow. And so, you know, they were trying to put me in the what they called regular classes. Right, right. And I remember being nervous. So I made my, I was like, mom, please take time off work and do this. Cause I was nervous. I don't know why, but right. she was like, okay, fine. So she took the time off of work, which was hard for her. Yeah. And then she was glad that she did because when he was like saying, oh, she can only do the regular classes, not yeah. the honors. She goes, but I know my daughter, she needs to be challenged and she hasn't been challenged. And yeah. that's why her test scores have been improved. Yeah. So I want her in these classes. And if she doesn't make it okay, then I'll put her back, but give her a chance. Right. And he kept saying, no, my mom said, Lena, wait for me outside. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> mama's going to handle this. After that, but she was my advocate. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that she knew to push. Yes. Yeah. And, that, and that, so I ended up, and then I panicked all summer because now I had five honors classes in PE. Right. And I was like, um, he told me I'm not going to make it. I believed him too. Right. And then my mom's like, just try. Like we were this close to just taking it all away, but she knew that that was my future. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to have someone in your corner. And sometimes sadly, you know, sometimes our parents are working class parents. My mom didn't know. I know, I, yeah. going to sit with me and then work out my college application. So I'm so always so grateful to my teachers. Yes. You know, when I became a high school teacher, I made it a class assignment everyone's, it, you know, my regular ed class, my AP class, it, my ELD class, everyone's going to know what that portal looks like, what, you know, all, all the types How of- How to make that email, check those emails. How yeah. to pick up a phone and make a phone call <laughs> if you don't understand a question, right? Vital. Right. So, no, I appreciate, uh, like I said, you know, the, how we got to this story. There's a reason why we're so passionate. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, you know, we're still trying to serve the, you know, those communities. Um, you know, one of the big questions I, I had as I kept thinking, like, I want Lena on the show, I want Lena, is because, you know, as a counselor at a community college and, and our high schools basically feed into your, your school, right? And Mount Sac right. is one of the largest and has such awesome programs. But, you know, we're finding a challenge with kids and apathy. After, you know, coming back from distance learning and interrupted education with so many substitutes and kids being sick, even still now, we're still facing with a lot of sicknesses. Now we have flu, now we have this. Are you seeing also a, a sense of apathy? How are students coming back from this post-pandemic type of era? Yeah, I think in the beginning, we really saw a lot of that. We definitely saw a huge increase in our mental health services and, and be it, it being utilized. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot more referrals, referrals to our behavior and wellness team wow. that where people were noticing that students were really struggling, um, wow. either behaviorally or apathy or just needing someone to talk to. Wow. So we did notice that. And I think we still are. But what we've noticed, I would say this fall more than anything, is the excitement to be back to almost normal. Almost normal. Yeah, that's great. Where, that's good. Yeah. yeah. That's been really, really nice to see. Um, and I think what they're struggling with now is, okay, I want some online because they like the, hmm. how, e like, they think it's going to be easy, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even though it may not have been easy when they were doing this during the pandemic, but right. they think it might be a little easier. 
Right. Um, and then it's the flexibility, right? I have right. more time in my schedule that I can decide when to do this, but they forget the discipline that's required for it. Yes, yes. And then they but then they remember, oh yeah, I like actually being around people and I like learning in a classroom and I don't do well on my own. Like right. so so they, there's kind of this trial and error that we find um with the online classes. Yeah, yeah. And that's for some people, they really thrive. But for others, I think that's what we're noticing too, is that they're figuring out they need to at least be hybrid. Right, right. Or in person. I, you know, I just made a comment about this earlier this morning. I was in a meeting with a staff, a high school staff, and I said, you know, the future of education, I'm just going to say it. it we're, I don't think we're going to go back to only in person. I think people want individualized instruction. And that looks different for different students. Some of them love and thrive in the actual big cloud campuses. You know, they're there with their friends. Others, I want to do my own thing. I want to just go online. I'm okay. I thrive that way. And, you know, as educators, we're trying to like manage, you know, both. Okay, how do we meet the needs of, of our students? The social emotional part. That one's really interesting. Um, and, you know, I like that you brought up that there's services there, right? What, what kind of services, uh, if, if you could share? And I'm going to kind of actually share the screen here because yeah. I know you all have amazing things. And I found here, was it, this is your page, yes? Yeah. <laughs> all right, big team, right? Yes, we have a very large team. Um, across campus, we have about 50 counselors between our general counseling, our special programs and our non-credit counselors. Mm -hmm. So a very large team, um, ready and like excited to help students they can't wait yes and then so, I saw it, you know just and again you know they could people can you know students because really you know I'm, I'm kind of talking to our, our educators out there in our, our in our community but also to students and to uh you know some of our leaders but you know they could spend so much time just looking through all of these sources is there any here that you would highly recommend for either high school you know counselors or uh you know teachers to kind of tell their students hey make sure you look at what would be one of them or, or two? I think um, for, it depends on like where the students are at, right? So mm -hmm. if they're like 10th, 11th grade and they're like interested in dual enrollment classes, then that's the thing with Mount Sac, we have so much going on, so many programs that it can often be really difficult to navigate your way, even on our website. Like, where do I go? Where do yeah. I look for? Yeah. So I would even start with our dual enrollment page for like ninth, 10th, 11th graders nice. um, because they can start taking college classes in 10th grade. So that summer after ninth grade, they right. can start taking college level courses for to meet with one of our counselors. And um, we do have dual enrollment counselors specifically, too. So for those that are already kind of in the mix, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say meet with them because they'll be able to talk to them more about how does this gonna help me like wherever I apply, whether it's Mount SAC, I can make an ed plan because I wanna go to Mount SAC now and then transfer or maybe get my degree there. Nice. Or they can then say, oh, when you're ready to come to Mount SAC, let us know, we'll help you. Um, and, or they say, if you need help applying, like you have to do it a little bit differently, right? In the application, if you're taking nice. college courses, they can answer some of those questions also. Yeah. So for our general counselors, I would say as soon as they're applying, they have already done an orientation and they're looking for what classes do I do next? We do have math workshops, but if a student can't make one of those times, that would be a good time to then maybe meet with a counselor mm -hmm. and start thinking about what classes do I need? This is what I'm thinking, and you can be undecided. And I think that's what students are most afraid of. Right. They don't want to see a counselor and say, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or I, they're I, not sure what to say. Right. I always they, used to have that argument with my students because, like, I don't know if I want to go to college. I don't know what I want to be. I'm like, actually, you go to college to figure it out. You're going to yeah. be close to so many people and so many things. That's where you figure life out. Yeah. And we're used to hearing, I don't know. And I would always tell students, it's our job to tease that out from you. Yes. We'll ask you questions. We'll say, okay, well, let's work together. Let's figure this out. We'll ask questions and kind of figure out, oh, you have this interest. Why don't you try this class? Oh, you have that interest. Why don't you try that out? Yeah. Without it being taking you completely off course, it's going to count for something. We don't want to make, have you take classes that 
aren't going to take you anywhere. Right, right, right. You want to make sure that it's what you are interested in and that it's going to go towards a goal that you want. And so many pathways. My, you know, my son went to Mount Sac and, and he thrived there. And, um, you know, so many of my, my students also, and, you know, then they transferred, they got into the honors, pro, the honors program at Mount Sac and then transferred. Uh, I believe you call it the tag program, right? The, yes. It's, and again, you know, people can look these up and there's so many yeah. resources there. Um, but what would be some of your recommendations to, let's say to our current, you know, high school students, not so much of like, you know, who to talk to or so forth, but just characteristics and, and mental, you know, thinking, uh, what do they have to be ready to do when they go to college? Yeah, I think the most important thing is to know that college really is for everybody. Mm -hmm. And because I, I mean, I even have family members who are like, oh, college isn't for me. Yeah, no, it's, it's for you too. It's what you make of it. And maybe you're not ready right now, but we'll always be there. So when that's you're cool. ready, mm -hmm. <laughs> come. That's what we're, that's what's a, the beauty of community college. You, you can know, be anywhere in your life. And, and as I'm thinking, you know, my, like I tell you, my high, my, my middle son, he is a, a high school senior and he's looking at different schools and so forth. But he also, you know, one of these, he always tells me, he's like, you know, mom, they just, they asked me if I wanted to be a manager at, at McDonald's. I'm like, you're 17, how are you gonna? He's like, I've already trained, you know, three other, you know, people who came in. And I'm thinking, is there a pull from our young people to just go into the workforce right now? Especially, yeah. you know, with the needs. And, and that's our biggest competition, honestly. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's, students all the time are telling us, I have to work, I have to work. Right. Can't come to school. So there's a lot of incentives to also go to college. And I think knowing what's available at the college that you go to is important to know too. What are those resources and incentives? Because they're looking and they want students. Yeah. Um, so we have the Promise program at Mount Sac for new students. And they give you gift, the book vouchers, the gift cards, the backpacks, the laptop, supplies, you can borrow, right? the laptop loan. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of things because they're like, we'll give you what you need yeah. and, it, and we'll work around your, you know, schedule you, your classes wherever you need them if you need to work, but come to school, even if it's one to two classes each semester, right. keep plugging away. It's better than nothing. Yeah. No, I always, you know, when students would come like, well, I need to work. I'm like, hey, we all work. <laughs> <laughs> like I worked when I was in college. I was working when I was like 10 years old because I used to work at the at the Vineland swap meet with my parents. Yeah, I said, yeah. what are you talking about? You know, like you can do it all. It's just, you know, managing your time. But I think that part that you said about knowing yourself enough to know, can you focus taking an online class? Can are you going to show up at eight in the morning for that class you registered for? <laughs> right. It's the discipline. I think knowing that. You can do this. We have the resources. We will make sure that you have what you need, but you have to put in the work. You yeah. do have to put in the time and the effort. Um, it, you know, you do have to do the readings. Yeah. Readings aren't fun necessarily until you're like, oh, now it is until you find what you like. Right? Yeah. yeah, and the, yeah. But the general education, some of it's not fun, but to someone else it is. And I think that's what we have to remember. But what I love about our Mount Sac professors is that they love, love what they're teaching. Yeah. And so even when something I'm not interested, I sit in the back and I've seen a million lectures and I'm like, wow, they have me interested in this. That's pretty amazing. Cause I didn't think I had any interest, but now I actually want to know more. And that's the beauty of being at a community college. You have very passionate professors who are PhDs and master's levels and they, right can't wait to share with you they just want you to be a little excited at least a little Show some give, some, give some effort <laughs> right I mean again I, I know a lot of people don't know this but I was actually a biology major when I went to UC San Diego because you know we all wanted to be doctors I know I wanted to be a doctor and I went in as pre-med and I soon realized eh, you know the science labs they weren't as interesting and then the same thing I took ethnic studies classes Chicano studies and all of a sudden it just called to me right in the literature, the humanities classes, and I found my way, right? And, and same thing. And, yeah. and then doing some of those like internships and partnerships and, and the jobs that kind of lined up to the type of career I was, you know, headed towards, it, it just got me. Like I used to teach uh, citizenship classes through a job I got through college, right? Yeah. And then I realized I like teaching. I like this idea. Right? Yes. And, and, and that's, that's how I got fun. into counseling, right? Like I, I ended up 
helping out these students and realize like this is what I want to do. So it just there and my my husband now actually is the one who got me into the community colleges. Nice. And he says, you know, there's students everywhere that need help. Yes. Yes. And I think for a lot of our educators, you know, sometimes we're we're just a lot of them are feeling defeated, you know, again, you know, test scores, you know, the media shows like in our students, you know, the learning gap and um, you know, so much politics. And that about- is so real right now with the pandemic. We are seeing that, yeah. but it's not their fault. <laughs> you know, it's not anyone's fault, really. I think it's just um. Yeah, it is. It, that is the reality. I think it brought to light a lot of things that maybe as educators, some people didn't know, like what our kids are not eating all the time, what internet doesn't always work. And so with that new knowledge, we're like, okay, what do we do about it now? Yeah. Right. And that's the conversation I'm having throughout, you know, at the district. It's like, okay, take a deep breath. And we do like, we have basic yeah. needs now. That's like huge on our campus. Like I said, students aren't afraid to like, tell us what they need as much anymore. Yeah. Before it was always a secret. Right. And you would give like a, a shower card if you knew someone was struggling with, um, with have a, a home to stay at every night, a bed to have, go to every night. Um, or you would like give them a little gift card so they could get something to eat. But now we actually have a whole basic needs resource center. Right. That's amazing. And what can, what can they get there at the base? At the so resource? they can get help with applying for aid. They can get that. We have a food pantry. Mm-hmm. that's available and then they can also help them with housing right so they they have this huge network in the area and they're there to help students and yeah. make no, sure I that mean, they can survive and and be healthy right and though you know and I think though that one thing that came out that was well it, that was good I think is that yeah that people realize a lot of people are going through mental health crisis and that we need to do more as educational partners right as leaders in our schools that you know, I always keep saying like, you know, we talk about SELs, you know, social emotional yeah. learning. I say it shouldn't be like a little side thing you do all like, oh, don't forget to do that. It <laughs> needs to be integrated and checking in and building those relationships. And, and I think you said it, kids may not realize how important it is to make relationships and to interact face to face with people, but, it, but it's one of the things that keeps us healthy, really, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And they're even, uh, you know, they, they are asking for help more. Yeah. They are opening up a little bit. I think they did. Some of them really did realize, like, I didn't feel good. Um, so, I mean, we saw smiles and tons of people on campus this fall. And it was so exciting for us, even as educators, right? Okay. So Because the first fall that we opened up, oh, my gosh, there were crickets. Like, it was so silent because yeah. the pandemic was still pretty strong and everyone's really Mm -hmm. afraid. I mean, it all made sense, but it felt so odd to be on this college campus and to have it be so quiet. Yeah. So it now feels like there's life again. That's awesome. I know we're still dealing with it, right? It's not, yeah, yeah. It's not ever going to go away, but, but it is something um, that we're living through. Right. And, and, and there's exciting things happening. I know that you know, I drive by there sometimes and I see the stadium. I'm like, oh my goodness, my kid doesn't go there anymore. But like, oh, I wish you and a lot of social activities there at Montsac. It really is like a mini university. A mm-hmm. There's so much. We have so many programs and resources available for students. And it's, and really whatever they want to look for, they can find, whether it's in a club or a program, right? So we have a lot of our first generation because that's the largest population, yeah. first generation students on this, on our campus. But we also have like affinity groups. So we have a center for black culture and student success. Nice. We have a brand new El Centro. Oh, do you? For, we, oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's so beautiful, right? So yeah. um, it's for all of our Latine yeah. <laughs> students. And, and it's to educate the campus community. And it's to involve the community outside of campus. That's what the Center for Black Culture and Student Success is for in El Centro. We have our Arise program for our Anapizi and Apahi. Oh, um, wow. groups nice. we have our dream program for our dreamers we have reach and then of course you can be all of you can be in every single one of these as well there's just so much there's yeah. so much support there um 
what else? I'm trying to think of what else we have, you know, the, but I'm then we sure, have, like, you know, we have a large LGBTQ population in we our, have our pride center. Yes. Right. So yeah. I think no one needs to feel alone. Uh, even, uh, you know, we sometimes, you know, uh, uh, put on pedestals, these top universities and you're going to go far away, but sometimes, you know, going down the street and that's what Mount Sac is definitely down the street for many of our students uh, as they're trying to figure out who we are or even leaving Mount Sac with a certificate, right? Right. And we have all kinds of great, like I said, programs. And to know that there's so many also, you know, support and groups and things. So the student doesn't have to just go take a class and come back home, that there's places for them yes. to be. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of ways to get involved. So even our associated students, the student government, our clubs are, are very active, but even if they want to know more about how do I get involved with making decisions on the campus, mm -hmm. we have big committees that professors and staff are on making decisions, right? And they always need student input. Nice. So if, you, if students want to get involved and find out more about that, they can be part of these committees. These yeah, campus yeah. white those committees, leadership skills, make, yes. speaking skills, right? A lot of young people. It's want amazing. To be, yeah, yeah, there's so much. And if they want to be a tutor, right? Or they, they're awesome at what they want to do with their, their math and English, <laughs> become tutors. There's so much opportunity. And you said your son went to Mount Sac, and my daughter's actually currently attending. Nice. And, and she's also going to the Mount Sac Early College Academy. Oh, great. Uh, and, utilizing dual enrollment. Yes. So I have, you know, my two girls are really like thriving with what Mount Sac has to offer too. Yes. And so it's really nice to not only see after all these years of my career, how it's really impacted students, but how it's impacting even my own children. You know, Mount Sac was a lifesaver for, for especially my oldest son. Uh, he struggled a little bit, uh, you know, at the end of high school. Um, he is diagnosed on the spectrum of autism. And so, you know, I, I kind of had to step back a little bit. I was too much a mom, <laughs> helicopter mom. And he found his way, you know, through Mount Sac and he it was able to transfer out. He's now at um, Cal State Channel Islands. Wow. And so, you know, he loved it there. He thrived. So I'm like, my goodness, it, it's a place for, for all kinds of our students. Um, and, so you know, my daughter was uh, uh, in the pandemic going to high school yeah. and really just felt like, I don't even know where I want to go or what I want to do anymore. The world really did flip upside yeah. down, yeah. right? Yeah. And when we looked at how every state's dealing with COVID differently than all the race relations yeah. and everything that was going yeah. on. And she was like, oh my gosh, this is just, it was a lot. Yeah. And she's, I just need some more time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is what it's providing her a great education, a little more time to figure out where exactly do I want to go? What do I want to study? Yeah. And she's actually doing really well there too. I and do so really it's been a blessing. The skill of adulting, a lot of times we kind of, you know, look down on our young people like, oh, because we compare them to us, right? Oh yeah. Okay. When I was in high school, I had a job. I, I was a lot more independent, but things are different now. They're right different. Yeah. so different and I keep saying you know to educators we're not trying to pull them to the past we're trying to push <laughs> yeah. it to the future <laughs> yeah. and I think we have to like you said recognize too how much things have changed mm -hmm. and is even now I always think I don't know that I would have gotten into UCSD mm -hmm. yeah. you know I, I don't think I would have how difficult it is now and the pressures and the stressors yeah. and yeah and the distractions I, I, I let's be honest right like if I have this little gadget here at all times and it's distracting me how in the world was, was I going to survive and I tell the you know educators we parents and society we gave this to our kids <laughs> and, yes and, and we're like here be quiet <laughs> I know right here's a pacifier <laughs> but you know I, it's a good bond like we, we need technology we just need to teach our young people how to manage it how to prioritize um and so I, I love all of this and the opportunities uh, I keep saying for our dreamers for our kids who, like you said, maybe didn't thrive so much at the high school level, but they can get a clean slate and, and find their way. I, so many great things. Well, thank you, Lena, so much. I don't know if you have any final, you know, uh, plug for your school. <laughs> I mean, I, hey, go to a football game if you get a chance. The stadium is beautiful. You don't yes. have to have a student that goes there. Um, there's a lot of new exciting things coming up. Our Student Success Center, or just our Student Center, it's being built in the middle of campus. If you ever are driving by, I think on Amar, you yeah. can see it on the left. 
it's humongous and it's really just for students so they can go in and study they can go hang out um and i'm thinking what how amazing we've never had that kind That's of a center at great. mount Zach. yes yes a lot of awesome things coming forward and just new programs so if you ever have questions you know everyone feel free to reach out too you can look me up yeah, <laughs> I'd be she happy is to down help. the street she's a neighbor now <laughs> well thank you so much for giving your time uh and yes if anybody does have questions you know I ha i'll have my contact information and lena's contact information uh, especially you know for any educators out there who want to know more about early um, college or the dual enrollment program great great things for our young people Gracias, gracias, big hugs, sending yes. you the positive <laughs> and wishing you the best, you know, in these uh, upcoming holidays. So thank, thank you so much, you. Lena. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.